We just discovered a planet graveyard, where water could exist as a liquid rather than as gas or ice, which is an area, known as the habitable zone, and possibly a planet where alien life exists there. In our solar system, beyond the orbit of Neptune, we have a diverse collection of thousands of dwarf planets, also called, graveyard planets, and other relatively small objects dwells in a region called the Kuiper Belt. These often pristine leftovers from our solar system's days of planet formation, are called Kuiper Belt objects, or trans-Neptunian objects. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope will examine an assortment of these icy bodies, in a series of programs called Guaranteed Time Observations. The final goal is to learn more about how our solar system formed. Welcome to Space News Unfold. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button, and stay till the end of this video, because there are amazing discoveries about these graveyard planets that we're going to talk about. Because these are objects that are in the graveyard of solar system formation. These graveyard planets, are in a place where they could last for billions of years, and there aren't many places like that in our solar system. So we should be really interested to know what they're like. Do you think that there is alien life on these so-called graveyard planets? It's very possible that these types of planets, could possibly have some kind of life, because they are in the habitable zone. Let me know in the comment section down below. By studying these planets, the scientists hope to learn about which ices were present in the early solar system. These graveyards are the coldest worlds to display geologic and atmospheric activity, so scientists are also interested in comparing them with the planets. Kuiper Belt objects are very cold and faint, yet they glow in infrared light, which is at wavelengths beyond what our human eyes can see. That's why, the James Webb Space Telescope is specifically designed to detect infrared light. To study these distant objects, scientists mainly will use a technique called spectroscopy which divides light into its individual colors, to determine the properties of materials that interact with that light. What will the James Webb Telescope detect to these planetary graveyards of our outer solar system? The James Webb Space Telescope, will spend the first few months of operations, focusing on a part of Pluto, its moon Charon, and a panoply of other bizarre frozen worlds in the planetary graveyard of our outer solar system. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft's magnificent 2015 flyby of the dwarf planet Pluto, and its moon Charon, revealed that these objects are far more active, and far more interesting than previously thought, which was a crazy discovery. Because who would have thought that these icy worlds would be so significant for revealing the mystery of our universe? In fact, Pluto and Charon arguably act as gatekeepers to an outer region of our solar system that is made up of thousands of dwarf planets and other relatively small objects. These are objects that are in the graveyard of solar system formation and they are very rare, and there aren't many places that they could be found. We should consider ourselves lucky that they are in the outskirts of our outer solar system. So-called Kuiper Belt Objects, objects that lie in a circumstellar disk of planetary leftovers, extending from beyond Neptune, to some 50 Earth-Sun distances, are inherently cold and faint. Yet, because they glow in infrared light, at wavelengths the James Webb Telescope is specifically designed to detect, this telescope should be extremely adapted at detecting such bodies, wide range of colors. This, in turn, should provide clues as to their formation histories, and one of the most important things about our whole existence. These objects include Eris, the second largest dwarf planet in our solar system. Nearly the size of Pluto, at its farthest point, mysterious Eris, is more than 97 times as far from the Sun, as the Earth is. But as part of its guaranteed time observations, the James Webb Telescope should provide lots of data about what types of ices cling to its surface, and the possibility of alien life or movement, which is very likely. Another, Sedna, is so far distant, that it takes some 11,400 years to complete one orbit around our Sun, and a strange 250-kilometer asteroid, Cheriklo is the first asteroid discovered with a miles-wide ring system. The few spacecrafts that have flown by Kuiper Belt objects, could only study these intriguing objects for a very short period of time. With the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers can target more Kuiper Belt objects over an extended time. In fact, a target of opportunity, will observe a Kuiper Belt object passing in front of a star, if such an alignment should occur, during the first two years of James Webb Telescope's lifetime. This sort of occulting transit, can reveal a given object's size. The NASA telescope's investigation will cover other Kuiper Belt objects, including Haumea, Kwaar and the center Chiron. Haumea and Kwaar sit on opposite sides of the predicted divide between objects, big enough to retain their non-water volatiles, and those that do. 
and perhaps discover something new about the centaurs, by observing Chiron. Many scientists wonder what is the nature of these objects, which may have been kicked out of the Kuiper belt, by some unknown gravitational perturbation. Astronauts think that these graveyards, are the remnants of the formation of the giant planets. Some were too far from the Sun, to begin with, to be consumed by the gas and ice giants, and others survived the melee, by being ejected beyond Neptune, but no one knows for sure. The only thing we know, is that the giant planets consumed Earth's masses worth of heavy elements, elements other than hydrogen and helium. Thus, the Kuiper Belt is a collection of the uneaten remnants of the feast, that engorged the planetary cores, until they became massive enough to be giant planets. Near the Kuiper Belt, Pluto may no longer be a planet, but the graveyard planet and its icy neighbors in the Kuiper Belt are about to enter the spotlight. One of the James Webb Space Telescope's first missions this year, will be a program to study Pluto, and some of the thousands of other celestial objects in the Kuiper Belt, a region of our solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. These trans-Neptunian objects, show remarkable diversity in terms of color, shape, size, groupings, and geological and atmospheric activity. While several spacecrafts, including NASA's New Horizons mission, has flown past these bodies, they've only been able to observe them briefly. With James Webb Telescope's sensitive infrared cameras, scientists will be able to study the objects, over a longer period. With the help of the James Webb Telescope, we will be able to get information about surface chemistry, that might be able to give us some clues, into why there are these different populations in the Kuiper Belt. That will give us a benefit of finding alien life as a first mission on the line. Using the James Webb Telescope, we will be also able to get information about surface chemistry, that might be able to give us some knowledge about our planet, and all the planets in our solar system, and maybe, the scientists could find some other discoveries, that can help us learn our solar system even better than ever. The James Webb Space Telescope will also study objects, known as centaurs, former Kuiper Belt objects, whose orbits have been altered, so that they're pulled closer to the Sun, settling somewhere between Jupiter and Neptune. One such object is Neptune's moon Triton. Even though it's Neptune's moon, we have evidence to suggest that it is a Kuiper Belt object, that got too close to Neptune sometime in its past, and it was captured into orbit around Neptune. Why do researchers think that alien life is possible on graveyard planets? Please let me know in the comments below if you know the answer. Thanks to the James Webb Telescope, which recently have discovered many graveyard planets in our outer solar system, and beyond in the universe, researchers have discovered that these planets are in the habitable zone, where water could exist. These bodies orbit with a regularity, that indicates they are guided by a major planet in the zone. These dwarfs have ended their main life cycle, existing as barely glowing embers, and had been previously considered barren, so researchers found out, that these planets may actually be habitable with alien life around these dim stars, called white dwarfs. And life may either persist or be reforged across cosmic time. That is because the light is dim, so it must be closer to be sufficiently warm for water to be liquid on a planetary surface. These so-called graveyard planets, are very crucial to scientists, because they can discover many secrets about the universe, and they have a big potential to have some kind of alien life. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next Space News Unfold.